What is good, YouTube? This is the FF Dynasty coming at you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment below with either love or if you're feeling like some hate, throw some shade down there. Either way, it all greatly helps us out so we can keep bringing you new content. Um, who, who was the easiest running back to evaluate in, in your process over this last year? I think Jonathan Taylor. Uh, I think that everything about him was pretty clear cut. Um, very powerful, can move a pile. Um, you know, you see that repeatedly on his tape. You might as well think that he's a furniture mover in terms of the way that he's able to move piles. It's unbelievable what he does there with his balance. And so he has that excellent contact, contact balance, terrific movement skills in terms of his his ability to, to make a variety of cuts and footwork adjustments to set up creases. And and I know what he does well. I mean, he's he has certain zone runs that he can perform well. He also has certain... Uh, you know, he plays in a lot of gap oriented type of um, schemes. So he's, he's strong with there and as good of, as he is as a runner and as fast as he is and, and all the athletic ability that he has, um, he's not much of a pass protector. He could be, but he's, he's kind of allergic to it right now. Um, and so he's something, something like that. Is that something that really concerns you or is that a, v- a very learnable trait? Is it more a, about willingness? Is it, you know, is it, how's that go? It's it's a combination of things for him because of his size, because of his quickness, and because I've seen him perform well on occasion. Um, to me, it's about effort with him, and I would have to think that you know more often than not, these are young guys, and they tend to mature and begin and get better as pass protectors if they have the skills, the baseline skills to do it. There may be some concerns about diagnosis, um, but from what I've seen. I've seen situations with him where I, I don't necessarily want to accuse him of not wanting to block, but I, I, I have to kind of go there because yeah, you kind of do where, right. In, yeah. in the, in your breakdown on the, on the uh, rookie scouting portfolio, you were kind of calling out his uh, a little bit of his yeah. effort, right? Yeah, it is because you watch him and there's plays. It's like, he's right there and he seems to do what wide receivers do downfield, which is try and make a, a create a situation where it's like, Oh, I just missed. And anyone watching the film is like, you've got to be kidding me. Like you just did that. You look like you look like the eighth grader who's like trying to get their little brother into the end zone and keep him from crying and giving him the give him the touchdown to run through the field. And everybody's like just missing the guy. That's kind of what he looked like in, in a lot of pass protection exposures where he was, you know, inches away and just moves away like he he's more rushes the outside dodging. shoulder of the man coming in yeah you know so he you know i've seen jordan wilkins the the colts running back excellent runner doesn't have that top end athletic ability but he's a terrific runner and he he's a very good pass protector who wanted to be when he was at old miss he would do that there was a play he completely whiffed on um i remember watching him in a game where he completely whiffed and then the and then the coach kind of yelled at him. And then the next time he was in the game, they ran that exact same protection scheme. And and he just lit up the guy with exactly the kind of technique you'd want. It was a picture perfect punch with position and everything. And I'm like, that's that's kind of what I see with with Taylor, which is it's it's more of an issue for him where it's the the want to and the consistency. It's it's kind of like the I've joked, it's kind of like the masseuse who doesn't want to come home and give his wife a massage because right. he does it all day long. You know, I'm, I'm a, I, I renovate houses for a living. I've, I don't want to come home and work on my own house. The, the shoes, the cobblers, children, you know, they don't have shoes, you know, those kind of deals. <laughs> that it's the whole so, deal. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Real quick, maybe, maybe Jonathan Taylor's just tired, man. He's doing everything. He's like, he's, man, you can have the pass. You can I'm have carrying the pass 10 people on my back. Yeah. What do you want more from? Yeah. That's exactly what I was about to say. If you feel like a guy like Jonathan Taylor is going to get such amount of work and everybody knows it coming in, he's going to pound the rock and you got to stop him. And Wisconsin's got the history. I feel like once he gets into the NFL and he's got a paycheck, it, th- you know, he doesn't. He's. It, I think that can be the next check mark on his list. Yeah, because he's a, a super high character guy. I mean, he when he when he's done with football, super he high wa- intelligence. He wants to yeah. go to Harvard and study astrophysics. That's what his like after football kind of mentality is. So maybe it was a little bit of some business decisions, toting the rock so many times, maybe trying to avoid some extra contact. Not, and that's 
it's perfectly possible. I mean, I, I've talked about that with a guy about like Isaiah Crowell back in the day, who was a Georgia back, who was a five-star recruit, and then went to what Alabama State. Yeah. And and at Alabama State, Reggie Barlow, former running back um, or kick returner for the Jaguars, who was their coach, called him out in the media and said, you know, there were times he took him out himself outside of games and didn't really do all the things he needed to do. And I gave him a pass because I was like, okay, you you basically got kicked out of Georgia. You could have been a top, you know, you could have been a top running back in terms of draft pick. You would have had great draft capital. And now you're at Alabama State and you know that you've got to be healthy for the combine. Right. Or else no one, you know, you're not exactly. going to have a shot to even be drafted. Some so self-preservation. That was all it was. And I thought, you know, the the college game, you know, I, I'm a big pro fan. College is, to me, serves a purpose for me, which is just to review. And I understand that a lot of people love college football. But to me, you know, when it comes down to it, the guys well, who let, know they have a shot in the people in the league, South know that, though, Matt. You got yeah. you got to keep up the image of yeah. loving <laughs> college football. You, you do, but I'm I'm probably one of those people that doesn't really do that. I, I yeah. pretty much say it serves a purpose, and that's all it is. And I think that at some point – you know, the, the co- what the college game demands of a player can be more than what necessarily either is necessarily fair or may not make m- the most sense for that player who may actually decide to go pro. And especially running backs. Especially running backs. All right. Well, um, well I didn't even know what Saturdays were for, for a long time because I grew up in the Northeast and college football is, you know, hardly a thing i moved down south 15 years ago and it's like you better get on board <laughs> so uh but it's a lot of fun saturdays at the game there's, there's not much not much better than that um, sure. well so we have taylor as our number one back we kind of have him in a tier above everybody else uh we we think that he's kind of one of those guys if you put him in a rookie draft like next year he's he has a chance in our opinion to be you know a, a first round pick i think we think that much of him that he could he's already kind of a second third round startup pick in a brand new startup dynasty draft. Um, we, we think that much of him, but he has, I guess the main thing is that the fumbling problem is that, is that something that is an issue to you? Is that a fixable problem? We mentioned that he's a really smart guy. I, fi- I find it hard to believe that somebody with his aptitude is, is not able to fix problems like that. But in, in your uh, opinion, how do, how do things like that usually pan out? Yeah. And, and it's a good, I would argue that brains has nothing to do with it because it's, because the thing about football is that it's a performance Avenue and any type of performance industry, you can be wicked smart, but when you're on that stage, there are certain things that just take over that, that are hard sometimes to correct. And part of that is feeling pressure. Part of that is putting pressure on yourself. Um, you know, having intelligence and having the maturity or wisdom or the emotional intelligence to to know how to block things out. Sometimes that takes time, you know, because you can get even the smartest people for sure, because they get in their own head and right. overthink things. And then that neurosis comes in into, into effect. So for him, it's it's about pass protection and running and uh, and being able to take care of the football. It, they are both correctable. Um, the, the hard part about um, correcting the football is that if if he overthinks it and he gets too much in his head, then he can lose confidence because he may fumble more, and then the team loses confidence in him, and then he loses opportunities um, as a result of that. We saw that with Stevon Ridley. We've seen that with a number of guys, but we've also seen recently Sony Michelle and Miles um, Sanders, who also right. had awful ball security issues, be able to um, really do a pretty good job of that for their first year. So yeah, yeah Alvin I, Cook is another one. I guess you could maybe throw in. Yeah. There. Tiki That's Barber a, a long time ago cleaned it up. Um, AP. Yeah, absolutely. Fumbled. And AP fumbled 20 times in his first two years, I think. Be, for Jonathan Taylor, you did see, I think, I believe it was nine fumbles in the freshman year and then split the difference on the 18 total on, on the next two years. So he did clean it up a little bit, I believe, from one, from one year to the, to the previous two years. But, I mean, still splitting nine between two years is still a lot. Yeah, um, he still but, had his his – his rate per fumbles was still so was still every year, even if you're just looking year by year, was still well below what was even committee tier for my for my expectations of how I rate. So as a result of that, he has to prove that he has to hold on the ball for me. And, and I think he can, but I can't give him, you know, I can't give him the extra points that separate him from my number one running back just because I think he can do it. I have to I can say 
I'm projecting some improvement and here's some points for that, but I'm not giving him double super secret points to give him on top of him over the guy, even if I think that it's possible, you know? It's fair. All right. That's fair. Yeah. 